not acceptable, then basically they would, he, he'd say, well, you know, propose to me if you have a rental idea in mind in terms of costs. Um, and then if at any point in that period of time he retired from practicing medicine, then the agreement would be terminated and we would, the county would take possession. Um, and that he cannot transfer the agreement to anybody else. So for example, he has a PA that works for him. Let's say he, he left medicine, but his PA stayed. He couldn't transfer it to him. Um, so from that, there were two things that I wanted to do. One is actually do an inspection and find out, is this building good to go or is it going to collapse in, you know, 60 days or whatever. Uh, Mike said he would be able to do the inspection. And then the other thing was, uh, what's it? What I, I wasn't clear if when the hospital did the quick claim deed, did, did the county accept it? Or like, what happened, what happened there? Um, the only reason I'm saying that is because then, um, I became aware that there were some taxes that were, property taxes that weren't being paid. And so the question is who, who is supposed to pay those taxes? So I guess we'll start with, did, did, did we accept the ownership of the property? No, we never did. Actually, yes, we did in the no. commission meeting, and then it was recorded. It was recorded, after. but it wasn't accepted at the appeal. Well, okay. So when, well, when, when was that? Mike, do you remember? It was winter, early spring. I'm thinking that it was, I want to say, March or April. It was months and months ago. Yeah. March or April. Okay, so this, because this, well, actually, no, that's the other issue. It wasn't a quick claim deed. It was a bill of sale. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was my question. So it's saying for valuable consideration. So did we give them something for this? Did we give the hospital anything for this building? I think they paid us. Um, right when it was recorded, I think there was a uh, payment made, and it was, I think it was like a dollar. It was like a minuscule amount. I guess let's put it this way. Do we have any reason why we don't want to accept the building? I mean, we, we want to accept the building. Or, because none of this, I mean, this this could be one of those things where there's literally legendary real estate cases off of that, whether it was a dollar or whether it was a nothing. Reality is it doesn't matter if we want to accept the building. We can take the building as of, this says February 17th, and I have it recorded on, it looks like February 27th. Okay. So. So legally, Corey, could we... What, what I think, and I I'm, don't know if you guys are in agreement, but I assume so, what we want is to keep Doc Campbell, because he has people who absolutely love him as a provider. So that's one. Two, we want to make sure we do this in a way that's legal, because he is a private business. And three, that building is dilapidated. It probably doesn't have much more than the five years minimum. Can we do something that, at the end of that, he moves the building off our property. And we're able to do something with that other than have a dilapidated building. I mean, the, the power thing is coming off, and I think Mike's going to come up with a whole list of issues with that building. If that's what we want to do, absolutely we can. Okay, I mean, so cool. we can, as far as he's a private entity, whatever. So some some payment of some kind to the, to the county, whether he does the health officer thing for free or some rent payment, it's fine. And if we want to, so we have two options here. One is we accept the building, and then when he's done, we move the building off, whatever we do for it. We could uh, sell we it. Yeah, him move it off? Well, that was the other thing we could do. The other thing we could do is say, whatever this agreement would be, at the end of that, when you retire, you are responsible for moving the building off, and it's yours. Or then we can structure the agreement however we want. Uh, first part is, right now, what I'm hearing is we do want to just get an agreement in place for him continuing while he's practicing there, they can use it, and it's either our building or it's not. So if we want to accept it as our building, 
it's our building. <laughs> if we don't want to accept it as our building, then it's right now a building without an owner. So we, we could probably figure that out. Could we sell it to him? I mean, we'd have to figure out market rate, but we could continue to let him pay rent for county ground so it doesn't have to be moved. Yeah, I think that's an option. Whatever, whatever, all those are options. Do you guys have a strong feeling either way? I think I'd be more comfortable with trying to sell it to him. Because ultimately, when whenever he retires and quits then practicing law, you guys would, or practicing would be responsible for anything. Right, and eventually you want it off, and then you'll use that space for something else. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. All right, that's what we will... So I guess the other issue is that it is the, the hospital paid the taxes after they had transferred it. Did they? And that's what they said at the last meeting, I believe, was that they had paid the taxes because they didn't want the taxes to go unpaid. Oh. But if it's a county building, does the county have to pay taxes to the county? No, no. But if it's owned by a private entity, that private entity should be picking up those taxes. Who would the well, doc would be the private entity? Yeah, so, so like, he should pay back the hospital, and then he should pay the taxes the from here on out. Well, in the future, I mean, at the time of this, he wasn't the owner. I'm not sure who the owner was. Oh. It was either us or the hospital, but I'm not, I'm not sure. It all goes back to did we accept the, did we accept the ownership of the building? Sure. So. All right. So if we did accept ownership, I'd like to see that report from Mike, um, but uh, then we would owe the hospital a refund for those taxes. Okay. Okay. Um. So, just give you a short. Well, I mean, so as far as the secretary goes, am I good to proceed with trying to find the part time secretary? That's no change there. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, just give you a short update on the criminal world, what's going on. There's been a lot of transition in the world of the public defender's office. I think we've seen a lot of articles about it. Well, so the reality is now, they did get an increase of, of appropriation in the legislature, but the sh budget shortages right now, they've been cutting, um, cutting back like all the state agencies have been. We have seen huge turnover from, from what it used to be. The first two years I was here, I primarily had one main defense lawyer that I dealt with. She was contract out of... Um, private practice out of three forks, and I had probably three out of every four cases with her, felony cases. And then I had one lawyer out of Bozeman who I had three out of every four misdemeanor cases with. So we had a lot of kind of stability things where I felt going along pretty well. We knew each other. We worked out, you know, if not playing tricks on each other, et cetera. Not, and there really none of that goes on. I don't see anybody either side playing tricks on each other. Now we see... Um, uh, in, a lot of changes of lawyers that are doing public defender work in Broadwater County. Some of them are coming out of Bozeman, some out of Helena. Um, there's a lot of different lawyers. There's a lot of lawyers who will start a case and then the office will substitute somebody else in. We have one case where, I have two cases, where the defendant is on their third lawyer and we're just in the early stages. And so what happens is it bogs things down uh, there's a lot of Fridays when that lawyer is not here and another lawyer is trying to cover. And, and so we've kind of just experienced this process that I hope is going to work itself out this fall. But a lot of our felony cases are being slowed down in terms of their resolution because of defense lawyer transitions. I mean, a couple of them were, were uh, I have one that's a year and a half old case. And we are resetting trial dates just now because they're on their third lawyer. It's just crazy. So 
The, thing, the other thing that's happening at the same time is the probation and parole office has had some significant changes. We still have the same probation officer mainly, but within that office, their procedures of how they're doing things, their revocations process, uh, how aggressive they want to be, uh, what they're spending money on, those are changing significantly. So um, I guess I feel like this, and most of it is because of the legislature from the, the post session on. So it's really been a lot this fall and summer. And what I think is going to likely happen is this fall, winter, and going into next year, the, um, you know, they teach you when you're first start as a prosecutor, you have to, you're, you're prosecuting, but you also have to kind of help out the defense so, so that you don't end up having to retry the case on an ineffective assistance of counsel appeal. I feel like in some ways I'm doing a lot more of that than I used to on typically on felony cases. And so, not because they're not good lawyers, but because they just don't have, they don't have the time uh, with these clients, whether because of their caseload or because they're getting pulled off and pluck, plucked out and plucked back in. So, um, we've been in a weird position, I guess is what I'm trying to say, um, with, with how the courts work. And then we have four different judges and they're rotating through and some of their schedules have been really difficult. So this has probably been the most turbulent year of prosecution at the district court level that, we've, that I've had, it's my third year, just in terms of cases getting moved to different judges because judge schedules or getting moved to different lawyers because lawyers. And so I don't know that it really affects you guys on a day-to-day -day basis, just, just to let you know that things in, the, in the, that level or in that court are not running smoothly like they used to, like they did last year. I think we're going to work out all right, but the result is um, we've, I think the result is we're doing fewer, I've only done two felony trials this year. I have another one that's going to go in um, November, but I'm only going to end up having three district court trials this year. Uh, we'll have, I don't know, one or two more in justice court or city court, but it's because the defense side of it is really struggling to keep up. And every lawyer that comes here either comes from Bozeman or Helena where they have many times this this caseload there and they're they're kind of honestly they're they're chasing their tail. They have a they have a tough deal. I just added up all my cases. I have um, and of course it changes literally day to day. But I have about thirty five city uh, city court, about thirty five justice court and then uh, total district court, I have about 40 because you, there are some that are cases, there are some that are revocations, there are some that are child neglect cases. So I'm sitting at about 110 cases and um, the result is that I'm, you can spend your time on about 20% of that and then you have to, you have to deal the rest. So that's kind of what's going on. Um, just thought I'd share that with you. And um, last thing I'll say on the Barris case, the, we had a scheduling conference set for, for in September, September 15th. Uh, we're not able to do it because of uh, some defense motions that were filed, which are sealed. So I can tell you privately, but I can't tell you on the record. But bottom line is those need to take, be handled before we can go to actually set the trial schedule. Uh, so I'm expecting we're having a status conference in November, uh, November 13th. Second week, second no, third third Friday of November, and um, my guess is that it's going to be December or January before we set the actual trial schedule. At this rate, I don't see a way that it happens this fiscal year. I think it's like we talked about. I think it's the earliest it would be is next summer. <coughs> okay. Other than that, sheriff's office—they—they um, they filled now all their vacancies. Um, we spent—we spent a long Saturday night on a search warrant with several officers. Uh, that was. 
it's good to, good to work with them in the field, and we were able to work with experienced guys and the new guys. But uh, I don't know. There's I keep I keep waiting for crime to stop. It doesn't stop. <laughs> it's crazy. Although our numbers are a little bit low, we're at 32 right now. So I I don't know that we'll hit 50 this year. I think we'll hit 45. Is my guess for the year. So anyway, what else do you want to know? Nothing for me. I mean, the no. uh, the hospital and the bank wanted to split that loan. So they only paid sixty this year and sixty next year, and said so that we need we need to provide them with some paperwork saying that we would approve that. Is that is that something that we can do? It's the last the payment last payment on, to state bank. That loan is supposed to be one hundred and twenty. Does the bank oppose that? No, they're the bank willing to does do not it? oppose. The bank just wants a piece of paper from us saying that we that, that we're okay with them making our payment in a split payment. As long as we don't suffer a financial penalty. And the bank's willing to do it, then that would be the only reason we would want to. Obviously, we'd like to have things paid off sooner, but if the bank's willing to carry it and they're not going to charge us something, I don't think that would be a problem. Okay. That's the only thing that I have. Well, um, kind of got over a hump here on some on some criminal things. Um, I, I I I do occasionally respond to the urgent over the important, and so I'll do my best to be quicker on some of these civil things. I like to get them closed out so we can put them aside, and then as new ones come up, I do think it would be a good idea to. Uh, use the Mako land use lawyer as much as possible on any subdivision stuff. She's there. She's she's really good. It's a until they tell us we're overusing her, in which case, you know, Nicole can scale back. I would say feel free to we should feel free to just make that the, the default. Um, just because that law to stay current on that law, you really have to be someone that specializes like Alan McCormick, our lawyer for Gals and Gory or for or for uh, um, someone who's doing it full time, so that'd be my recommendation. And I'll, I've talked to Nicole a little bit about that. So, okay. Any other thoughts? Mm -mm. Not for me. No. Thank you very much. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Uh, so, are you going to follow up with uh, Doc Campbell and get back to us? I am. Okay. Yeah. I am. All right. Um, oh, and BLM. Nick. And BLM. I'm going to get a hold of Mr. Seifert. And I have court uh, Friday in Helena. So I'm, I'll see if I can arrange to just go meet with him at his office. Okay. So the other thing that's going on due to judges' schedules is I have court in Helena this week and I have court uh, in Helena next Thursday and then court here Friday <laughs> because we're chasing judges. So I'm. Um, and I had court last week in Helena. So I, I've i actually had a lot of court in Helena lately just because of the judges uh, and their schedules. And then in some kind, if it's a mental case, it's better to for me to go there for a hearing rather than transport everybody here. So I've done that several times. More, In fact, all of my, now that I think about all of my contested mental cases have been in Helena because it just makes more sense that I drive rather than everybody comes down here. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Take care. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Too much. Well, when do you think you'll be back to us on Blackfoot? The contract. I will. They. Um, I need to get them whatever this other agreement is, the service standard thing. So that was the other thing that I was that I kind of caught my ears. He said, "Well, that's part of the contract. Well, if it's part of the contract, it has to be part of the contract. Uh, in other words, it has to be something we all review." So. I will get that from them, or go pull it off their website, and then I will, I think I'll just spend today doing civil stuff, because um, today's Tuesday. Yeah, if I don't do it today, then I don't, it might affect my Thursday court. So I'll just spend today doing civil stuff. And so I'll try, if I get that today, I'll try and do an email to all of you by 
sometime tonight on on that contract and any issues I have with it. Oh, and then I have conservation district. No. Okay. Thank you. That's okay. going to go. All All right. Right. Take care. Thanks. Is there anything else? Yeah, I have a couple of things, but I need a five minute or, or two minute. Um, I have a an appointment. I have to leave at two, but I think we'll be done by then, right? It's one twenty-two. So, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Okay. What time is it now? It's uh, about one That's when you're dying. You better go to that. You never know when it's going to happen. That's right. Um, well, I'm glad we got that black money thing through. Which mm -hmm. one? That black money. It looked like it was going to pull. She was getting strong, strong, strong. Yeah, I wonder what the deal is with the contract. Search and rescue get going on that damn thing. Yeah, yeah. That's who we're going to do. Scott, I don't know why it's Scott. Well, I, I don't know that. I don't think they ever approached the weed board. Probably not. Yeah. No, that's good. Get, like I told you, get that weed done and then they can start their project out there on the lake for that big boat. Yeah. They, they, they're all, we need to get rid of that boat. I'm going, Jesus Christ, where are you going to, I don't know why you would want to get rid of that boat. Yeah. I mean, it's not wore out. They just they just can't get parts for it. What the hell? I don't know why I couldn't get parts. The only parts would be if we motor it, boy. But if we motor it, yeah, that's the case. I don't even know what the hell it has for a motor. I, uh, it's I, think a you, I think you can machine just about anything you need for the damn That's right, yeah. And that's the only boat that can go on that lake. When I mean, when that lake, usually that boat handles it. Mm -hmm. like, that, that really is when you need it. That's right. That's the only place to can use is on that lake. Yeah. That's why out there we're building for that damn thing and just maintain and take care of it. Like, I, I talked to you know, here they had this side to side and I asked them, I said, how long have they? So they said, we've got 16,000 hours on it. They use it every day feed and winter time. Who's that? Uh, it was um, Barney Colbert. So, oh, Barney? Mm -hmm. Oh. This, one, this particular one was a John Deere. Well, that could be the difference. I know Wayne Shaw and had one of them. They had about three of them sitting there. Quit using this part.
he'd taken his break when we were taking ours. <laughs> Instead Probably. of after we came back. <laughs> Would have been a good thing. Yeah. We have our um, analysis that I had asked the executive board to task Harold and Mike, or Harold and Eric with putting together. Um, we had a lot come up at conference, at the Mako conference, about all the money that the state's transferring to counties. Mm -hmm. That pretty much the, county, the state's saying, these have to be done by law, but we're not going to pay for it, so counties, you go ahead and take care of it. Oh, nice. And a whole host of stuff. So we asked, I asked um, that the MAKO board instruct MAKO staff to put together a full analysis. And they did, and it's it's pretty pretty in depth. But I think Corey alluded to some of those cuts in defense mm -hmm. is just bogging down the system. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not like those trials are going away; they're just being kicked back. They just keep moving around. Right. right. So, um, yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, what I wanted. To, yeah, there is. I wanted to talk about policy and how to do things legally and correct. So um, the first question I have is this letter that um, Franklin wrote for the Tostin Bridge. Did this get emailed or did it get sent? Get sent. Okay. Um, I did talk to Craig King, I think is his last name. He was the one putting together the support letters and he said if they were not emailed to him, he was not going to get it. So he did not get this support letter. Um, which I did write one myself, um, but we need to talk about how this is done. This was emailed to him, so he did get something from the sheriff and from one commissioner. This letter, um, it shouldn't be on one person to write all the letters. We need to start sharing the work. I had asked that Franklin email this letter to us so that we could review it and then give authority for him to go ahead and send it on our behalf. They were that, in copies in there. That was not done. I received an email that this had been completed, but had not been given a chance to review it. That would have been fine, Mike, if it wasn't for this header. Where you have this header that has the full commission, this is assumed to be a commission-supported letter. You read it, and it's fine for this one. But if it had been another subject, this could have gotten Franklin and the county into some deep legal trouble. So the correct way to do this would be one of two ways. One, the letter is emailed to all commissioners so that there's a paper trail. We're able to respond and say yes or no. Or if Franklin says, I need to know by 12 noon tomorrow, if I don't hear from you, I'll assume it's okay. That's an okay. Because in the meeting we had said we support writing a letter. Does that make sense? Yeah. If it is from county letterhead with the three of us, it should have all three of our signatures at the bottom of the page, not just Franklin's. The difference in this letter is it's just my letterhead. There's no other commissioner listed here. It's just me. I signed it. This is my opinion. If in the meeting we had said we don't support this particular project, I still legally can do this because I'm just speaking for me, me as, as a commissioner. Okay. This one, because of the header, is a different story. So um, I wanted that just in fu for future reference. We need to follow the law on that stuff. <clears throat> so the second thing is, and, and Mike, I know you're getting it, but you can't do this job without knowing the internet, without knowing how to email. That is probably the number one requirement of this job. So the second one is, I thought in the budget process, we had agreed not to charge the county mileage. Corey and all his traveling to court in Helena, he doesn't charge miles. Debbie and Michelle do not charge miles to try and help their budget. Um, we have a policy in the personnel policy handbook that if a county car is available, we will not pay for someone to use their personal vehicle. County cars were available for each of these dates. So um, a lot of these has just come into the courthouse. I don't think we, uh, since we have an agreement, I don't think we should pay this, um, especially when 
we asked for a report. You know, we, we go to conference. The three of us, there's four different committee meetings <clears throat> twice, and then there's breakouts two times for, with two different sessions. The th each of the three of us should be hitting a different committee and giving a report on it like you and I did, Mike, and we should be splitting up with those breakout sessions and reporting back to the other who didn't go. Um, not all three go into the same ones. We didn't get any kind of a report on this. So I, I'd like to know what you guys think on this. And then the, uh, the last thing is, is it's just $15, but if we can confirm that we're going to go to something like conference and do that before the late date, we save 15 bucks a piece. That adds up over the year. Also, if we stay at a hotel and we charge the government rate rather than their retail rate, we also can save. I, w I still am happy to pay the hotel as proposed by Franklin and the conference, but I would request for the sake of the county that we save everywhere we, that we can. That's all. So I do want to know your opinion on this. Okay, we did yes. have an agreement. We'll be adjourned at 1.30. I'd, I'd like an answer to my question. What question? About my uh, claims? Yeah, I think I just asked it. They're twice. all right there, you bet. <clears throat> we had that. We, we talked that with Corey over uh, no, two we years didn't. ago. No, I, this year, with the budget process, we agreed not to take mileage. We didn't budget for it. No. And we have a I never put any mileage down for the regular meeting, like these Monday meetings, stuff like that. I never put any mileage down. That's been clear all along. I got to be at another place at two, so anyway, well, we're adjourned at, at one thirty. I haven't claimed any, and I'm not going to claim any. So I don't either. We did not budget for this. If we were going to budget for this, Franklin could have, should have said during the budgeting, hey, wait, I want another $2,000 put in that particular line item because I'm going to charge for mileage. He didn't. We don't have the money there. We cut our budget. Um, we have a very scary general fund budget this year. We had an agreement, I thought. Are we not going to uphold it or are we going to uphold it? Yeah, that's yours, sir.